Hello, my name is Hans George Campbell. I'm out of my shop today and I thought I'd show you guys how to do this 2 megabyte chip RAM upgrade on an Amiga 500 Revision 6 motherboard. Okay, um, <clears throat> I printed out these, uh, I printed out my instructions for doing the 2 megabyte chip RAM upgrade on a Mega 500 Revision 6 motherboard. Um, if your Amiga 500 motherboard is a Revision 5, this upgrade will not work. Your motherboard must be a Revision 6 motherboard. And after we finish doing all of these steps, uh, we would have successfully converted our Revision 6 motherboard to a Revision 7 motherboard. Yes, you heard that right. By doing these steps, by performing this upgrade, you will convert your Amiga 500 Revision 6 motherboard to a Revision 7 motherboard, which is an early uh, Amiga 500 Plus motherboard. And this is how this was done at the Commodore factories. Um, this is how this was done. Anyway, let's go through these steps. <clears throat> And then I'll actually show you how to do this on an Amiga 500 motherboard. First thing you want to do is you want to remove the original Agnes chip from its socket. Okay. Then you want to plug in an 8372B Agnes chip. That's the same Agnes chip that is found in the Amiga 3000 computer. <clears throat> it must be the 8372B not the 8375 chip. Okay. Um, and as, as a note, um, the mega chips that work in the Amiga 2000 and the Amiga 500 motherboards, um, there's two versions of the mega chip. The first version has the A372B Agnes chip. And this version of the Mega Chip works beautifully in both the Amiga 2000 and the 500. But the later versions of the Mega Chip came with the A375 Agnes Chip, and these are the Mega Chips that everyone seems to have problems with. They can't get them to work in their Amiga 2000 or Amiga 500. So if you're having problems with your Mega Chip, okay, check to see. If it's got an 8372B Agnes chip or an 8375 Agnes chip. And yeah, that should solve your problem. All right. <clears throat> Next thing you got to do is you have to unsolder and remove the four 44256 DRAMs because these DRAMs are not needed. Next, you want to clear the holes of solder from U20, U21, U22, and U23. <clears throat> then you want to clear the holes of solder from C20, C21, C22, and C23. Next you want to solder in 0.33 microfarad capacitors on C20, C21, C22, and C23. <clears throat> Next, you want to solder in 20 pin IC sockets on U20, U21, 22, and 23. 
After that, you want to plug in 44 C1000 drams into the IC sockets. Now, these drams are very hard to get today. In fact, they were very hard to get even back then. Um, but in a moment, I'm going to show you a printout um, of the model numbers of all the DRAMs, you know, the, the make and model numbers of those DRAMs, including the companies, you know, that produce them. So that if you want to look for these DRAMs, try to find them, then you'll know what to look for. <clears throat> but in case you can't find these DRAMs, in part two of this video, I'm going to show you how you can make these drams yourself using circuit boards and the surface mount versions of these chips, which are readily available today. I'll show you how to do that. <clears throat> um, the rest of this has to do with the jumpers, reconfiguring the jumpers on the board. So locate JP2 near pin 1 of the Kickstart ROM. Drill through the trace connecting lower pad to center pad. Yes, you heard that right. You want to drill through the trace. Do not use an X-Acto knife or a sharp blade to cut through the trace. I see so many of you doing that. Don't do it. That is, that is wrong. It's a wrong way of cutting a trace. In the electronics industry, we, you know, as a professional, we drilled. We use a small, we use like a pin vise and usually a 1 16th inch drill bit to very carefully drill through the trace and I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. We also use like magnification, like I use the 7, seven power magnifier goggles. You really need to have magnifier goggles on so you can clearly see the trace and make sure that your, the drill bit stays on the middle of that trace while you're slowly drilling through with the pen vise. All right. Um, solder bridge center pad to upper pad of JP2. Um, locate JP5 between the Kickstart ROM and the Agnes chip. Drill through trace connecting the two upper right hand pads. Solder bridge the top two pads. Locate JP3 between RAM chips and expansion connector. Drill through the traces connecting these pads. Center. Solder bridge the two pads on left and two pads on right. Okay. So these are the steps that are needed to convert your Revision 6 motherboard to a Revision 7 motherboard. Basically an early version of the Amiga 500 Plus motherboard. So, now I'm going to show you a sheet with all the, that has all the DRAM numbers and stuff. If, in case you want to try to find these rare DRAMs for yourself online. You know, good luck with that. Uh, but like I said, in part two of this video, I am going to show you guys how to make your own um, DRAMs, you know, using circuit boards and the service mounted versions of these memory chips. Okay, here is... Um, something that I found on the internet, um, it's a list of DRAMs, the different memory chips, and the ones that we're mostly concerned with are the ones that I have highlighted in yellow. Those are the rare 1 megabyte by 4 bit DRAMs. So it takes two of them to make uh, one megabyte. Okay, and these are the part numbers for the different manufacturers, like Fujitsu, 
LG Semi, Hitachi, what was it, Hyundai, Micron, Mitsubishi, Motorola, Oki, NEC, Samsung, Texas Instruments, or Texas, uh, and Toshiba. And hopefully I've zoomed in enough to where you can clearly read these numbers. Um, okay, in fact, I think I'm going to zoom in a little bit more because I want you to be able to read these numbers. So there's there's that. Okay. These four manufacturers here, these are the part numbers. Okay. Now, sometimes I do find these rare chips on eBay. And, of course, I snatch them up whenever I do find them. Because uh, they are getting hard to find. I think a lot of us do that are after these memory chips. And then there's uh, there's the next set of four manufacturers. Right there. And then the remaining, I think there's only 12 companies that actually made these chips, you know, made these RAMs. Yeah. All right. This is a Revision 6 Amiga 500 motherboard. Um, as some of you eagle-eyed viewers will probably notice, there are some capacitors missing on the board. That's because I'm in the middle of recapping this motherboard, and I haven't soldered in the new caps yet, but just ignore that. Um, okay, so according to the, you know, according to my instructions that we took a look at earlier, the first step is to remove the original Agnes chip, this Agnes chip here, from its socket and plug in um, an Amiga 3000 Agnes chip. And I'll show you what that looks like because I happen to have one. Um, let me first ground myself, chuck something. My antiseptic mat is grounded. Make sure to discharge my body of static electricity because these chips are very rare. They're very hard to come by. So, but it looks like, um, it looks like that. I don't know how well you can see that, but that is a 2 megabyte Agnes chip from an Amiga 3000. Now I will show this a little bit better later on in the video. I'll actually set it on the mat and I'll zoom in on it so you can see it very clearly. You know, but that's the Agnes chip that you want to put into that socket. One of these Agnes chips. And 83, I believe it's 8372 um, B Agnes. Okay. Put this back in its anti-static bag. Don't want anything happening to it. Because uh, this is a good chip. It's a working pull. So, yeah. All right. Okay. All right. So, that's the first two steps. Um, the next thing to do is you want to unsolder these original DRAMs here. You want to unsolder those and remove those DRAMs from the motherboard. They're not needed for the 2 megabyte chip RAM upgrade. Now I don't know why this is. Why couldn't we just use these same locations instead of removing these and then the new DRAMs go here? I don't quite understand why that is. I think it has something to do with the location of, of, of the memory. I don't know. Um, but yeah, you remove the next step is remove, you know, unsolder and remove these four 
grams there. Okay. The next step after that is you want to remove the solder that are in these holes here, including for the capacitors. You want to remove all this solder out here. Okay. Then you want to solder on um, 0.33 microfarad capacitors right here in these locations. Okay. And you want to solder in tw um, 20 pin IC sockets here in these locations there. Okay. After you do that, then you plug in your 44 C1000 drams, basically your uh, 1 megabyte by 4 bit drams. They get plugged into here, and that will give you your 2 megabytes of chip memory. Um, okay, the next thing you need to do is you need to locate uh, JP2 near pin 1 of the Kickstarter, which I believe is right here. Okay, that's JP2 right there. Okay. And you need to drill through the trace, connecting the lower pad to the center pad. And I'll zoom in so that we can see that better. Okay. Zoom in so we can see that a little bit better. Okay, JP2. All right. Okay, there's uh, JP2, boys and girls. All right, JP2, okay. And we want to, yeah. We want to drill through the trace that connects the lower pad to the center pad. Okay, and what you use for that, let me get it out. I'll show you what we use. We use, well, let me, let me zoom back out a little bit. We use this. This is called a pin vise. And this is what we use professionally in the electronics industry. And the drill bit, the common drill bit that we use is a one six, uh, sixteenth of an inch drill bit. Make sure it is a brand new drill bit and that it is sharp on the end here. It needs to be sharp. Okay, so once this tip gets dull, remove it from the pin vise, throw it in the garbage, plug it in a new one when you're drilling through traces. You, to have a successful drill, it has to be a, a new drill bit that is sharp on this tip right here. But this is what we use right here. Okay, it's called a pin vise, and you want to use a very sharp, high quality, 16th of an inch drill bit. Okay, this is, what, this is how you do it professionally. Okay, and we also use, well, you're going to need, because you need to be able to see clearly what you are doing. You're going to need to, let me zoom out even more. Not that far, Mr. Campbell. You're going to need to get yourself a pair of these. These are seven power magnifying goggles. Now, the vintage ones, like what I have here, they have glass optics. The newer ones have plastic optics. I actually prefer these glass optics. And you can change them. You can change these optics. You can, there's like, they go all the way down to like 2 power, I think all the way up to like 20 power. So you actually can change these lenses. They're, they're interchangeable, those lenses. But yeah, you need a, a pair of these on your head so you can see that trace clearly when you're drilling through it with that pin vise. Okay, and, and the drill bit. Okay, so let's zoom back in. All right, the next step, okay, is you want to create a solder bridge between the middle, uh, the middle tr trace here and the upper trace. Okay, then 
that part's done. All right, next we want to locate JP5, which is between the Kickstart ROM and the Agnes chip. JP5. It's been a while since I've done this. Okay, I think JP5. Let me look real quick. Let me look. There's JP5 right there. Okay? What am I doing? Mr. Gamble, what are you doing? I just want to make sure that it's, you know, centered underneath the camera and you can see it real clearly. It doesn't have to be perfect, Mr. Gamble, just as long as they can see it. Let me zoom out a little bit. Might be a little bit too close. Okay, anywhere, there's, um, that's JP5. Okay? And you want to drill through the trace connecting the two upper right-hand pads, which is going to be those two traces up there. Those right there. You want to drill through that. Okay, drill through the trace connecting the two upper right-hand pads. Next, you want to solder bridge uh, the top two pads. That's, I believe, these two right here. Uh, those two pads there. You want to solder bridge. Um, well, let me get the pointer where I need to put it. You need to solder bridge it. Put a solder bridge between those two top pads right there. Okay. Locate JP3 between the RAM chips and the expansion connector. All right. Um, I need to look and see where that's at. Let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, zoom out a little bit. See where that's at. Now, where are we looking for? JP3. Okay, JP3. Okay, now that's interesting that JP7 is not needed. JP7 is used, is used for the 1 megawatt chip RAM upgrade. So, what we want to do is we want to get... Um, okay. Right... Right there. That's JP3. Okay, JP3. All right, JP3, just making sure. All right. All right. You want to drill through the traces connecting these pads um, center. Then you want to solder bridge the two pads on the left and the two pads on the right. So basically, you want to... Okay, where the pads are connected, you want to drill through that trace, right? And then you want to put a solder bridge on these two pads and a solder bridge on those two pads. Okay, solder bridge there and a solder bridge there. Going, you know, this way. Okay, that's how you want to do that. And that's it. That's all that you have to do to, to do the, the upgrade. But wait, the video's not over. I got more to show you. Um, got more to show you. Okay. Come on, Mr. Campbell. All right. So to for you know a quick recap, we want to remove the original 
Agnes chip and we want to plug in an 8372 uh, 72B Agnes chip which is from an Amiga 3000 computer we want to unsolder and remove these four grams okay we want to clear the holes of solder of these locations here including the capacitor locations all right and we want to solder in 0.33 microfarad capacitors here and 20 pin IC sockets here and after you finish doing that then you want to plug in your 44 C 1000 drams into these sockets okay um, then you want to locate JP2 which is here it's JP2 and you want to drill through the trace connecting lower pad to the center pad okay then you want to solder bridge the center pad to the upper pad of JP2 all right next locate JP5 which is right there okay and you want to drill through the trace connecting the two upper right hand pads then you want to solder bridge the top two pads right here on JP5 um, okay next we want to locate JP3 which is right there and we want to drill through the traces connecting these pads center then we want to solder bridge the two pads on the left and solder bridge the two pads on the right. Now, after you do all these steps, you would have successfully converted a Revision 6 um, Amiga 500 motherboard to a Revision 7 Amiga 500 motherboard, basically an early version of the Amiga 500 Plus motherboard. All right. This here is the um, 8372B Agnes chip from an Amiga 3000 computer. This is the correct Agnes chip to use for this upgrade. And in case you cannot find those rare DRAMs, those 1 meg by 4 bit DRAMs, um, this, these are the, the PCBs I was talking about. You can buy these on eBay and other places on the internet. And then the, the surface mount version of those RAMs are readily available. I usually buy them in like quantities of 20 at a time. And you solder in these gold plated round, you know, these precision pins here onto the board. And you solder your RAM chip onto the board and of course this will plug into the 20 pin um, IC socket. Now because I am using these gold plated round pins in this instance you do want to use the precision um, you know those, those IC sockets that have the gold plated round you know, um, you do want to use those precision IC sockets because you're using these type of pins here. And that's what those IC sockets are designed for. Okay, those sockets are not designed for integrated circuits. And I see so many of you using those, those uh, precision, uh, you know, those IC sockets. Uh, they're not really IC sockets. Okay, they're not made for ICs. They're made for these round pins like this. Okay, that's what they're used for. If you do find those rare drams, I recommend that you go with a normal, um, you know, a really high quality dual wipe contact IC socket like that. Do not use machined sockets for ICs. I cannot stress that enough. Don't do it. Machined ICs are used for 
these machined pins. That's what they're designed for. Okay? And this is also true for other expansions for the Amiga computer. Let's say you're plugging in like the RGB to HDMI board into your Amiga 500's uh, what is it? The Denise socket? Well, the pins on that board are these type of pins here. Okay, these machined pins. They're round. So, in this instance, you want to unsolder the normal IC socket and you solder in a machined socket for these types of pins here. Okay? But remember, if you're using ICs, if you're, if you're installing ICs or plugging ICs, use IC sockets. Do not use machined sockets. Okay? Machine sockets are only for use with machined pins like these. Okay? Anyway, I thought I'd show you this and talk a little bit about it. Well, that's it for this video. Um, in part two of this series, I am going to show you how to make these. I am going to show you how to make these and how they plug into the Amiga 500 uh, motherboard. Okay, I am going to show you that. And I am going to show me actually converting one of my own Amiga 500 motherboards, you know, the Rev 6 motherboards, to a Rev 7, you know, with 2 megabytes of chip memory. I'm, I'm going to show you step by step how I actually do that. But in this video, I just wanted to go over the basics. I just wanted to explain how you do it so that you have a, a better understanding of how this is all done. So that when I do the part of the video, which would be probably be part three, most likely going to be part three of the series, where I actually show me doing the work. And in that video, you'll better understand what I'm doing by watching, you know, by first watching this video here. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, stay tuned for more exciting content here on the Hans Campbell Show. My name is Hans George Campbell, and until next time.